Just before we begin looking at some practice questions involving the use of the laws of indices and the laws of logs, I just wanted to remind you that the formulas that you require for this particular section are included on the equation sheet. Um, so as you work through these questions, it may be helpful to have either a printed copy of the equation sheet alongside you, or alternatively, you can save the PDF from the study platform to your user area. Now for the time being, all that you're going to need to do with regards to indices and logs is be able to apply the fundamental laws, the laws of indices and the laws of logs. So I'm just going to do a couple of examples of each of these and then we'll also talk about how we can apply logarithms and how we can use that function in order to determine unknowns in equations. So first of all, the first law of indices states that a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. So if we have something along the lines of a to the 5 and we multiply it by a to the 7, then what we will end up with is a to the 12. The second law of indices stated on your sheets was that a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. And once again, we can take something relatively straightforward. If we have a to the 9 and we divide it by a cubed, or a to the 3, we'll be left with a to the 6. The third law of indices that you may be asked to apply is that a to the m, all raised to the power n, is the same as a to the m times n. And if we have an example of that, if we had a squared all cubed, then that's the same as a to the 6. The only other thing really to be aware of when we're working with indices of this type is that we can separate out different variables. So if we had something of the form c equals a cubed b squared, a cubed b cubed, then we can separate out the a's and the b's, and we would end up with c equals well, here we've got a cubed times a cubed. a cubed times a cubed is a to the 6 because we need to add the indices. And here we've got b squared and b cubed because we're multiplying b squared by b cubed. Once again, we add the indices, which would give us b to the 5. This works just the same with negative numbers. So we might have a to the minus 2, b cubed, b squared, b to the minus 1, a to the 6. So all that we're doing here is we're combining all of the terms that contain a, and then we're going to combine all of the terms that contain b. So we have c equals, we have a to the minus 2 times a to the 6. Well, minus 2 plus 6 is 4, so we'll end up with a to the 4. We then have b cubed times b squared times b to the minus 1. Well, we can do this in one go if we wish, in which case we would do 3 plus 2 minus 1. Or if you prefer, you can do this in a couple of steps. So b cubed times b squared is b to the 5. We still need to multiply that by b to the minus 1. And when we do that, we get a to the 4. The a remains unchanged. b to the 5 times b to the minus 1 is b to the 4, where 5 minus 1 is 4. Now this is exactly the same when we're dividing by indices. So we could have, again, c equals a squared b cubed a cubed, all divided by a squared times b. This time, what we will do is we'll simplify the tops and bottoms first of all. So we will get a squared times a cubed is a to the 5. And we only have one term containing b on the top. And on the bottom, we have a squared b. So essentially what we've got, if we treat the terms involving a separately, we have a to the 5 divided by a to the 2. Therefore, we need to subtract the 2 from the 5 because of the laws of indices, and we'll get c equals a to the 5 divided by a to the 2 leaves us a cubed. 
And now if we look at the terms involving B, we've got B cubed divided by B. Well, B on its own is just B to the 1. So we've got B cubed divided by B to the 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, leaving us with B squared. I'm just going to do one more example of these, bringing in our other law of indices. So if we had C equals A squared B cubed, all squared, then what we would end up with, we would need to apply the square term to the A squared, and we would need to apply the square term to the B cubed. Well, A squared all squared, or raised to the power 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so we would just get a to the 4. And b cubed all squared, 3 times 2 is 6, so we would get b to the 6.